Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 4, Leçon A. So let's see what we'll discover in this lesson and we'll work on something really important that we call le futur proche. So basically if you want to translate it directly it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with aller at the present form followed by the infinitive so the basic form of the verb okay so like in English you would say I am going to travel for instance in French we would say je vais voyager okay so remember first aller that you conjugate at the present form and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay? So first, of course, we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it, but still, I think that it is really important to see how it goes. So we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form. Okay? First person here, je vais. Remember, final S not pronounced. Je vais. Okay, tu vas. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il, elle va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal on, really in your nose, okay, on. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful. Nous allons. Nous allons. Okay? Same thing here. Vous allez. Vous allez. All right? Remember, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay? But then when you combine these two letters, you get the sound E. Okay? Allez. And then vous allez. All right? And the last persons. Il. Elles vont. Ils vont. Elles vont. Okay, remember, final T not pronounced, so you get this O-N nasal here. On vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont. Elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new. Okay, because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine. So, une nouvelle maison, a new house. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Okay, and then, il, elle, va partir, partir is to leave. Okay, pour, pour means for, pour, un, En. One year. Un an. Okay? So I will make the liaison just to, to make it more, more uh, normal after. Okay? But I just want to divide here. Un an. Okay? So let's read it normally now. Il va partir pour un an. Okay? So you can hear that now I make this link between the two. Un an. Un an. So no break between the two. Un an. Okay? Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. 
Okay? Then for nous, nous allons chanter, chanter means to sing, okay? Set chanson. So remember, set, feminine form of se, this, okay? Chanson, song, and as chanson is feminine, so you should put this, this form here at the feminine, this, okay? Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Mm -hmm. And then for vous, vous allez adorer, so adorer to adore, to love a lot, <laughs> ce film, ok? Ce, so you see now this, ok? But then it's the masculine form because film, film here is masculine. Ce film, this movie, ok? Vous allez adorer ce film. Vous allez adorer ce film. And the last one. Ils vont boire, boire is to drink, un café, a coffee. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Ok, so let's repeat everything again. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Vous allez adorer ce film. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. All right. So, now you know how to construct this future proche form. Uh, remember that really the verb aller is, uh, is, is quite important, so you should definitely know it uh, by, by heart. Okay, but then it was uh, leçon A. Remember that you can check for the next lesson right here, okay, on YouTube. And the channel is Imagier. And then the website here, imagier.net. You can find more material. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon B. And in, this, in, in this lesson, sorry, we'll uh, try to work on the le genre des mots, so the gender of the words, because normally that's uh, something a bit difficult uh, for um, students to know or to remember the gender of the words. So normally what I tell them is to try to memorize, try to remember the gender when they discover or when they see a new word, but I know it's not uh, it's not easy. Okay, so in this lesson we'll try to see actually a few endings that give you some useful tips and uh, well, well, we'll focus only on the on the feminine, feminine words uh, and we'll start right now. <clears throat> Sorry. So, uh, when you see words that are ending with this E-O-N, so you can be almost, <laughs> this is quite important, never say always uh, when you talk about Fran French langu language because you always find some uh, exceptions, okay, so uh, I won't say always, I will say in most of the cases, okay, when they end with E-O-N, okay, um, they, in most of the cases, they will be feminine. Okay, so for instance here, la libération, or then la nation. Okay. Other ending is t, so when a word is finishing or ending with t, like that, la rapidité, rapidité means uh, speed, and then la santé, health, okay, in this case, you can be almost sure that these words will be feminine, okay? When they're ending with U-R-E, UR, okay? La peinture, paint, la voiture, car, okay? So they are feminine. And then when they're ending with S, like that, E, S, S, E. So for instance, la politesse, la vitesse. Vitesse means uh, speed, okay? So these words are feminine and these endings are classical ending for feminine form. Okay, so let's see them one more time. La libération, la nation, la rapidité, la santé, 
la peinture, la voiture, la politesse, la vitesse. Ok So let's see a few more. So, still for the feminine form. So, when you will have a word ending with this E, double T, E, et, et, ok, for instance, la chaussette, la roulette, so they will be feminine, ok, chaussette means sock, and then roulette, well, it's the same, the thing you will find in casinos, and then when they're ending with E, E, like here, Okay, so basically you don't pronounce the, the E, okay, so it will be only the sound E, okay, for instance, la vie, life, okay, la partie, the part, okay, so they will be feminine as well, okay, and then words ending with E, accent aigu, and then E here, okay, remember this final E is not pronounced, so you will have this E, remember, accent aigu, it's E, sound, ok, la poupée, the doll, l'arrivée, the arrival, ok, la poupée, l'arrivée, so feminine as well, uh, in that case, remember that normally it should be la arrivée, but as arrivée, as usual, you know, start with the, a vowel, then a is disappearing, and then you just put this apostrophe, ok, and then words ending with ud, like that, u, d, e, Ud, okay, are normally, in most of the cases, feminine. La gratitude, well, if I, my understanding is correct, is exactly the same in English. La gratitude, and then same thing here, latitude. Latitude. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. La chaussette, la roulette, la vie, la partie. La poupée, l'arrivée, la gratitude, l'attitude. Ok, I know it's not the key, it's not the magic key that will help you forever and uh, that will uh, give you all the time the, 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 the correct gender of the words, but still you've got some, you've got some tips now, ok, it was leçon B, ok, remember that I've been doing uh, many lessons so they can be found there on youtube.com slash imagier okay and then the website is here imagier.net you can find more material there have a nice day bye bye bonjour à tous hi everyone and welcome to learn french with vincent this is unité 4 leçon c and the good news is that i'm recovering my voice little by little in this lesson, we'll discover together l'article partitif. So what's l'article partitif? Well, basically, it's when you want to say that you want some sugar, for instance. So you don't want to specify the quantity. Okay, just want to say that you want some, but you don't want to say one, two, three. Okay, then, as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so for the masculine form, it will be du. Okay, du. Simple thing, d, u. This is u, this is d. Du, all right. And then for the feminine form, it will be de la. Okay, de la. All right, masculine form, du. Feminine form, de la. All right, let's see a few examples now. Je bois, bois, boire is to drink, okay, so je bois du café. All right, so you can see the difference here. It would be possible to say je bois un café, okay. In that case, you would translate it, je bois un café by I drink one coffee or I drink a coffee. Okay. In that case, when you put this du café, so first you put the masculine form because café is masculine, okay? and then you want to say, you don't want to specify the quantity, you want to say, I drink some coffee. Okay? Je bois du café. Okay? Uh, the other option as well would be to say, je bois le 
café. So if you want to put this article défini, but then you would have to put more information after le café de ma mère, uh, the coffee of my mother, if you want. Okay. So in that case, in this lesson, we'll only focus on l'article partitif. So it's some. Okay. Je bois du café. All right. Let's see another option. Tu voudrais. So I wanted to introduce this voudrais form. Okay. So it's coming from vouloir. Vouloir is to want. Okay. But then it's not the present form here. The classic present form. It's the conditionnel form. Okay. So it's the polite form that normally we should use. So I would like to have. You know, you don't say tu veux. You don't say you want because it is uh, it is too 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 strong and too direct. So normally we tend to use this conditionnel form. Uh, so tu voudrais. You would like to have. And then salad, okay, and it's feminine, so you should put the feminine form of this partitif, so de la salade, so some salad, okay, tu voudrais de la salade, all right, let's see another example here, nous mangeons, so manger is to eat, okay, and that's the, the form for nous, okay, nous Mangeons du gâteau. Gâteau is cake, okay, and it's masculine, so du gâteau. We eat some cake. Vous voulez, okay, so vouloir again, all right, to want, okay, but here it's the present form, okay, do you want? Vous voulez du fromage, cheese, du fromage, so some cheese. And it's a question. Vous voulez du fromage? Okay. And the last example here. So I've been putting this il y a. We'll see that a bit later in this unit, but it will come. Il y a means there is. Okay. Il y a, there is. Okay. Il y a de la neige. Neige is snow. Okay. Par terre, on the ground. Par terre. So there is snow. On the ground. Il y a de la neige par terre. Okay, so let's repeat all these sentences. The first one. Je bois du café. Second one. Tu voudrais de la salade. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Vous voulez du fromage? It's a question. So I've been insisting a little bit too much maybe. Let's do it one more time. Vous voulez du fromage? And the last one, il y a de la neige par terre. All right. So, I hope it was clear. Remember, it's quite important, this um, article partitif. And, uh, well, it's not that difficult. Uh, I can tell you that because normally my students tend to understand and use it uh, quite easily. So, no problem for you. Don't worry. Check out for the next lesson and the previous lessons. As well, they're on youtube.com slash imagier here. And then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon D. And in this lesson, we'll discover together pourquoi, why, pourquoi, why. Okay? So, if you ask a question with pourquoi, why? Normally, the answer that you will have will start with whether parce que, because, okay, or then pour, plus, one verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form, okay? So whether parce que, and then you just start a sentence, or then pour, plus, a verb at the infinitive form. Okay, let's see now some examples. First question. Pourquoi es-tu ici? Pourquoi es-tu ici? Okay, ici means here. Es-tu? Are you? Why are you here? Pourquoi es-tu ici? 
So the first answer. Parce que, so because, je suis invité, I am invited, par, by Nicolas. Because I am invited by Nicolas. Parce que, je suis invité par Nicolas. Okay, so normally when, when you start with the parce que, so you want to express the reason why, okay? Parce que, je suis invité par Nicolas. All right? And then, other option would be pour passer la soirée. So in that case, passer uh, should be translated like, like uh, spend, okay? Pour, to spend, pour passer la soirée, the evening, avec, with, vous, you. Pour passer la soirée avec vous, to spend the evening with you. And in that case, when you will start your answer with pour, okay, so you will express what will you, you, you will do uh, after that, okay, pour passer la soirée avec vous. Okay, and in that case, parce que you want to introduce the reason why. Okay, so that's the way we will construct answers when you will ask a question with pourquoi. Okay, I hope it was clear. It was a short one, but still quite useful. Okay, and it was, oops, it was uh, leçon des. So you can find the next uh, lesson there at Imagier, so that's the name of the channel on YouTube, and then the website is here. Okay, have a great day, bye-bye. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon E. And in this lesson, we'll try to answer this question. Où est le cube? Where is the cube? Où est le cube? Okay, so let's see that together. Uh, so here, first situation here okay so this is le cube and this is le cylindre okay so just to make it clear because that's the things we'll use uh, to introduce well the prepositions le cube est sur le cylindre so you can see it's on okay so sur le cylindre okay and there is contact here Okay, it's quite important. Second option, same thing, but it's basically under here. Le cube est sous le cylindre. Okay, le cube est sous le cylindre. Don't pronounce the final S. And then this OU combination of vowels is pronounced OU. Okay, sous, sous. Le cube est sous le cylindre. All right? Then, here, no contact. And that's really important. Okay? Le cube est au-dessus du cylindre. So let's repeat it. Le cube est au-dessus, final S not pronounced here, au-dessus du cylindre. Okay? Then, Same, situa same, same, same situation, sorry, but then the opposite, so it's here, and no contact here, you can see no contact. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre, okay? Au-dessous, final S not pronounced, du cylindre. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre, all right? So, here, I've been putting the plural form because we've got... Here. Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. So next to, okay? Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay? Gauche, left. On the left of le cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Ok. Then the next one. Droite, obviously it's right, on the right. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. 
OK In front of le cube est devant le cylindre. Le cube est devant le cylindre. And now behind it's not possible to see it that's the reason why le cube est derrière so behind le cylindre le cube est derrière le cylindre so i've been taking away the color just to to show you that it's inside okay so in le cube est dans so in le cylindre le cube est dans le cylindre. That's it. Uh, take the time to watch it one more time if it's not uh, clear for you. Uh, it was leçon E. Uh, remember that the next lesson can be found on YouTube and it's the name of the channel here, Imagier. Or then the website, imagier.net if you want more material. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon F. And in this lesson we'll discover les adverbes de lieu. So really useful and we're starting right now. So the first one that we'll see. So I've been putting each time the English first and then the French version here. Okay, so here <laughs> so i was re i won't read the, the 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 english one i will focus on the on the french one if that's okay with you ici ici okay then la so remember you've got this accent but well you don't pronounce it okay so it's la la whoops la ba Là-bas. Remember final S not pronounced. Là-bas. Loin. Loin. So remember when you get this combination O I N it's loin loin loin, okay? Loin. All right? So let's see them one more time. Ici. Là. Là-bas. Loin. Ok. Devant. Final T not pronounced. Devant. Devant. Derrière. So if you look carefully, you've got E here and then double R. So it will open the sound of this E and you should pronounce it E. Ok. De. Derrière. Same thing here, you get this E accent grave, E, derrière, okay, don't pronounce the final E, derrière, okay, final S not pronounced, dessus, 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 dessous, dessous, final S not pronounced here, dessous, okay, so let's repeat them. Devant, derrière, dessus, dessous. Ok? Dedans, final S not pronounced. Dedans, dedans. Dehors. Ok? So remember, final S not pronounced and then this H in French doesn't exist phonetically, so you don't pronounce it. De. Or, dehors, dehors, en haut, en haut, okay, final T not pronounced, and then this H as previously, you don't pronounce it, so this is O, en haut, en haut, en haut, en bas, final S not pronounced, en bas, en bas, okay. Quelque part, don't pronounce the final T, quelque part, quelque part, autre part, autre part, autre part, 
ailleurs. Look, final S not pronounced, and then you've got this y, y, y sound. Ailleurs. Okay, so I, sorry, I insist a little bit too much, maybe, but still, let's read it normally now. Ailleurs. Ailleurs. Okay. Autour. 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 Okay, so repeat them one more time. Quelque part. Autre part. Ailleurs. Autour. So now you are well equipped with that verb de lieu. Okay, it was leçon F. Uh, if you want to check for the next lesson, it's here. YouTube.com slash Imagier, or then the website is here as well, Imagier.net, if you want more material. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll try to see together how to express, comment exprimer, sorry, comment exprimer l'obligation. So, when you must do something, well... There is a verb for that to express to express must, and this is falloir. Falloir, okay, falloir, and then you will have two options. The first one will be il faut. So you get to remember that falloir is what we call verb impersonnel, okay, because there is only one form, and it's il, third person of the singular, il. Faux, okay. So uh, je, tu, nous, vous, etc. They don't exist for falloir. It's only il, okay. Il faut, and then the verb coming after will be at the infinitive, okay. So that's the way to express to must, okay. And then or to have to if you want. Il faut, okay. Same form, but then you will. Add after that a nom, a noun. Okay, so whether a verb at the infinitive form or then a noun. So we'll see a few examples now. So the first scénario, as we would say in French, is falloir plus infinitif. Okay, so here, il faut respecter les règles. All right, il Faut respecter, so to respect, les règles, the rules. Il faut respecter les règles. All right, and then another option. So I've been putting here and here the two parts of the negative form. Il ne faut pas fumer, fumer is to smoke, ici, here. Il ne faut pas Fumer ici. Okay, so now we'll see the way it works with noun, a noun. And here, for instance, il faut. So still il faut, remember, as I said, uh, it's only il faut. So it's a verb impersonnel. Okay. Une carte d'identité. Il faut une carte d'identité. Second example here, il faut un parapluie, umbrella, un parapluie, car, because, il pleut, it's raining, it rains, il faut un parapluie, car il pleut, all right, so, it was short, and I hope, clear. It was uh, Unité 4, Leçon G. Remember that uh, here, that's the name of the channel, Imagier on YouTube. You can find um, the next lessons, of course, and then the previous lessons. And if you go on the website, you can find more material. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll discover les adjectifs ordinaux. Les adjectifs ordinaux, so in English it would be first, second, third, 
fourth, etc., etc. So we'll see how they go in uh, in French. And so we'll start with the first, okay? And as usual in French, remember, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? So each time we'll have here and here the masculine form and the feminine form. Here, that's the way you can see them written when you get to make them short, okay? So they can be written like that, okay? So we'll pronounce them. Le premier, so the first, le premier, la première. Le premier, la première. Okay? Then, le deuxième, la deuxième. So in that case, it's only the le and la that will be different because deuxième will be the same if you look at them. Okay? Then, same thing here. Le troisième, la troisième. Le troisième, la troisième. Okay? Le quatrième, la quatrième. Le quatrième, la quatrième. Le cinquième, la cinquième. Le cinquième, la cinquième. Le sixième, la sixième. Le sixième, la sixième. Le septième, so remember we don't pronounce this P here. Le septième, la septième. Ok? Le huitième, remember H doesn't exist. Huitième, huitième, la huitième. Le neuvième, neuvième, so it's V here, remember, V, vième, la neuvième. Le neuvième, la neuvième. Le dixième, so remember, if, even if you've got this Z, X here, you pronounce it Z, dixième, dixième, same thing as we had here, sixième, okay, le dixième, la dixième. All right, that's it. I hope it was clear. It was leçon H, and then you can find the other lessons right here. Okay, and then the website is here, imagi.net. You can find more material. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon I. And in this lesson, we'll discover together how to conjugate uh, le verbe partir. Partir means to leave, okay, at the present form. So we see this verb because uh, this verb is normally quite useful. And then uh, it is not regular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs. So it's always good to see the conjugation together, okay? So the first form is je pars. So final S not pronounced. Je pars. Tu pars. Same form, you can see here and here. So final S not pronounced. Tu pars. Il, elle, part. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle, part. Okay, so you can see that it's part. Sorry. <laughs> part, part. And then par, okay, so the same phonetical form for these persons, but then obviously, and of course, for nous, it will be different. So, classic ending O and S, you don't pronounce the S, you just have this on, on sound, nasal, nous partons, nous partons, okay, then for vous, classic ending for vous as well, a Z, but then you pronounce it E, vous. Partez, vous partez, okay, and the last persons, il, elle, part, remember, classic ending, e, n, t, but then you don't pronounce them, part, part, okay, so let's repeat them again, je pars, tu pars, il part, elle part, nous partons, 
Vous partez. Ils partent. Elles partent. Ok, so that's it for the verb partir. Uh, if you want more lessons, then you can find them at the following address. And then the website is here, imagier.net, if you want more material. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll discover together how to conjugate at the present form le verbe venir. So venir means to come. Okay, so it's quite useful and especially it does belong to the third group of verbs so it's not regular so for the present form it's quite useful to spend few minutes just to see the conjugation together okay so we'll we'll start right now first form je viens final s not pronounced je viens remember i e n yen yen je viens okay tu Viens, final S, not pronounced. Tu viens. Okay, then il, elle, vient. Final T, not pronounced. Il, elle, vient. Okay, so je viens, tu viens, il, elle, vient. Phonetically, it's the same form. Okay, but then for nous, it will be a bit different. O, N, S, remember, classic ending for nous at the present form. Final S not pronounced, so you will get the sound venons, nous venons, nous venons. Okay, then classic ending for vous, a Z here, and then you pronounce it E, vous venez, vous venez. Okay, and the last one here, so you've got this double N just after the E, so it will change a little bit your pronunciation you will have to pronounce this e uh, like e eh, e eh, okay il vient so remember this classic ending e uh, n t for the third person of the plural is here but phonetically doesn't exist so you don't pronounce it vien vien okay il vien elle vien all right so let's see the form one more time je viens tu viens il vient elle vient nous venons vous venez ils viennent elles viennent all right so venir is quite important be sure to remember it by heart please 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 s'il vous plaît uh, and then when you're ready you can go at the following address to find the next lesson okay and then more material here imagie.net have a great day au revoir bonjour à tous uh, hi everyone and welcome to learn french with vincent this is unité 4 leçon k and in this lesson we'll discover a big big thing so it's les pronoms cod okay so no stress but still it will be quite important Okay, les pronoms C O D. So we'll take first a sentence. Okay, so it's a question and it's Tu regardes la télévision. Okay, so Tu regardes, regarder is to watch la télévision. So if we look at this question, okay, and then we want to define all the elements, the first Thing that we've got in this sentence is tu okay so it's here and it's sujet so the subject of the sentence here okay second part that we've got here is regarde okay regarde here and it's the verb okay that you've been conjugating it's a s just because it's tu all right and the second part or the, sorry, the, so the third part here, so the la last part, la télévision. So la télévision, that's what we will call complément, okay, because it's a complement, it will complete the sentence here by giving some information. It's objet, it doesn't have anything to do because it's uh, la télévision, okay, so it's not an object like that, but it's what we call grammatical object, 
okay? And we say that it's direct because you don't have any preposition between the verb and this complement, okay? So no preposition, so it's direct, okay? So why do we say that it's quite important to use les pronoms COD? Just because when you've got a question, so if someone is asking you to regard la télévision, okay, the first option would be Oui, je regarde la télévision. So of course it's possible to repeat, I mean this part, la télévision. Okay, but then if we are honest, then in most of the cases, we won't repeat la télévision in that case. We will use what we call pronouns, okay, just to avoid repeating this word. Okay, so let's see these pronouns together. So as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural. Okay, in that case here, we'll start with the masculin singulier. Masculin singulier will be first le or then as usual if we've got a vowel coming after the e will disappear so it will be l apostrophe okay le or then l like that okay if it's feminine and at the singular form so we're talking here about the third person of the singular, it will be la, or for the same reasons as previously, l apostrophe if you get a vowel after. Okay, and then for the plural form, so here we're talking about the third person of the plural, then it will be les. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. So for the masculine singular form, it's le. For the feminine singular form, it's la, okay? And then, if they are followed by vowels, then you take a and a away, and then you get this l, okay? And for the plural form here, it's le, all right? So, let's see that in action now. So, if you get the same question, tu regardes la télévision, all right? So now we've got all the elements. So we know that tu was the subject, regard the verb, la télévision, complément d'objet direct, and that's the thing we want to replace. We don't want to repeat la télévision, okay? So first, what do we need to do is first to spot the gender of the word. We know that la télévision is feminine, Okay, so we've got all the keys necessary. Oui, je, la, regarde. So, as I said a long time ago in the lesson, remember that in French, the pronouns, like this one for instance, are coming before the verb. So that's the reason why you will have this la here before the verb. Oui, je, la, regarde. Okay? Let's take another question. And here you've got Tu vas regarder la télévision. So what's the difference between the previous question and this question? Well, this is, and we saw that in a previous lesson, uh, I guess it was on this unit, so you can check it if you're not sure about that. That's what we call the future proche, so the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. You are going to watch. Okay, so that's the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. Okay. And then here, if you look carefully, well, you've got two verbs. And that's the important thing here. So if you will have a structure with two verbs, verbs and then you want to use a pronoun this pronoun will come always before the second verb like here oui je vais la regarder 
okay so i'm not telling you that it will come between the two verbs because you can have many things between these verbs okay so focus on this idea that it will come before the second verb oui je vais la regarder okay so we'll see that les pronoms complément d'objet direct can replace all the persons so for the first person it will be me second person it will be te third person of the singular so the one we saw le for the masculine form and then la for the feminine form first person of the plural nous so basically it's quite easy to memorize this one to remember it same thing here second person of the plural vous and then third person of the plural les all right so me te le la nous vous les all right so we'll see now a few examples so the first one il me regarde so if you want to say that he is looking at me il me regarde okay so remember as i said previously these pronouns are coming before the verb okay il me regarde present form only one verb you just put it before il me regarde il te regarde so he's looking at you il te regarde il le regarde il la regarde he's looking at him he's looking at her il nous regarde il vous regarde il les regarde okay it's not that difficult when you when you try to remember well first of course the the pronouns and then this idea that it will come before the verb well honestly it's not that tricky okay uh, i've been putting the same sentence but then at this near future form okay so just to show you if you forgot it that it should come before the second verb okay so il va me regarder so he's going to watch me hein, or to look at me okay il va me regarder il va te regarder il va le regarder il va la regarder il va nous regarder il va vous regarder il va les regarder ok that's the end of les pronoms complément d'objet direct uh, you can check uh, for the the other lessons that are on youtube and it's imagier the name of the channel and then uh, the website imagier.net is here okay you can find more material have a great day bye bye Bonjour à tous, hi everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon L. And in this lesson, we'll have the pleasure to see together what we call les pronoms C-O-I. Okay, les pronoms C-O-I. So, uh, well, let's say that it's the second part of uh, les pronoms C-O-I. O, complément d'objet, okay? So if you didn't watch the previous lesson, uh, well, maybe it would be it would be better to, to do so, so that you could understand maybe more clearly the, 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 the whole thing, okay? But then still, we're starting right now. So, les pronoms complément d'objet direct. So we'll start with a, une question, a question, okay? So we'll see. It's a basic question, okay? You get, tu parles à ton frère. Okay, parler is to talk. Tu parles, you talk, to your brother, à ton frère. Okay, so if we have a look at the elements in this sentence, the first part or the first element is tu, okay, and that's the subject. 
of the sentence, tu, all right? Then the second element is parle, okay? And that's the, the verb. So it's ending like that because you've been conjugating this verb according to tu, okay? But it's a verb here. And then we've got this last part here, à ton frère. So that's what we call complément. So it will come to complete the sentence, okay? And it's objet, okay? So be careful, it's really what we call a grammatical object. So it's not an object because in that case, it's a good example because it's a person, okay? But then it's a grammatical object and it's indirect because you've got this preposition a here, okay? So in the previous les uh, lesson, we saw the direct ones, okay? They were without any preposition, okay? But then in this lesson, it's indirect because you've got the preposition a here, okay? And it will change the things. So, let's see the question. You can ask the question, so it's the same, tu parles à ton frère, okay? And then the answer that you could give, of course, would be oui, je parle à mon frère, but let's say that in most of the cases in French, we won't repeat this à mon frère, part, okay, we'd rather use pronouns just to avoid repeating this complément d'objet indirect, okay, so we'll see how they go. As usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form, okay, and here, just to start, we'll start with masculine singular, okay, masculine singular form will be lui, okay, ui, ui, lui, all right, féminin singulier, so feminine form and the singular form here, it will be lui, <coughs> so it's quite easy to memorize, to remember, okay, because it is the same form for the masculine and the feminine form, okay, and then for the plural form, so third person of the plural, to be more precise, it will be leur. Okay, so masculine singular, third person of the singular, lui, féminin singulier, feminine singular form, third person of the singular, lui, and then the plural form, third person of the plural, leur. Okay, let's see now the same question. Okay, tu parles à ton frère. Okay, and the idea in that case, of course, is to avoid repeating this part here, so complément d'objet indirect, and to replace it with the pronoun, okay? So first, we know that it's indirect because we've got the preposition here. We know here that it's masculine because it's brother, okay? And then we've got the information here because it's ton, all right? So we've got all the elements just to reply using the pronoun. Oui, je, lui parle. Okay? So the only thing you should really um, think about here is the position. So you should remember, as I said previously, that the pronouns in French will be placed before the verb. So je, lui, parle. Oui, je lui parle. All right? And then we could have, well, basically the same question, but then this question would be like it is here at the near future. So if you didn't see the lesson regarding the, the near future, uh, maybe it would be uh, more useful for you to, to watch it, but still, the near future, it's a way to construct the future, but at the present tense, with the, the verb aller, to go, you are going to speak or talk, okay, to your brother, okay, so you are going to, but then the, the important thing in that thing in that case is that you've got two verbs, okay, you've got aller here, to go, and then you've got parler, to speak or to talk, okay, and when you've got two verbs, then 
for the pronoun that you would like to use, you will have to put it just before the second verb. Oui, je vais lui parler. Okay, so I'm not telling you that uh, it should be between because that's the case here. But then between these two verbs, you could put many, many things, okay, like adverbs or other things. Okay, so remember that this pronoun lui should be before the second verb. All right, so now we'll see these pronouns, but then for all the persons, okay, for the first person of the singular it will be me, second person of the singular, te, then third person like we saw, so masculine and feminine, I only put one, so lui, because it's the same, first person of the plural, nous, second person of the plural, vous, third person of the plural, leur, okay, me, te, lui, Nous, vous, leur. All right? So let's see examples now. So he's talking to me. Il me parle. Okay, remember, me, and then before the verb, il me parle. He's talking to you. Il te parle. Il lui parle. I don't know why lui is still white. <laughs> well, maybe it was a mistake for my... Yeah, it is a mistake. It should be It should be arranged, but then still. Il lui parle. Okay. Il nous parle. Il vous parle. Il leur parle. All right. Il me parle. Il te parle. Il lui parle. Il nous parle. Il vous parle, il leur parle. Okay, so these examples are with one verb, okay, and then I've been rewrite, rewriting the same, same um, sentence, but then at the near future, okay, with the two verbs, and then we can see how they go now. Il va me parler, he's going to talk to me. Il va me parler, so remember, you know, me before the second verb. Il va te parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va lui parler, he's going to talk to her or he's going to talk to him. Okay. Il va nous parler, he's going to talk to us. Il va vous parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va leur parler, he's going to talk to them. Okay. Il va me parler, il va te parler, il va lui parler, il va nous parler. Il va vous parler, il va leur parler. That's it. Congratulations if everything is clear. It was Leçon L. Be sure to find more lessons there on youtube.com slash imagier. And then the website is here and it's waiting for you. Okay, bye bye. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll see how to conjugate together le verbe vouloir. Vouloir means to want, and uh, it belongs to the third group of verbs in French, so irregular. So that's the reason why I think it's quite good to see the conjugation at the present form together. So here it goes. Vouloir, first person, je veux, final X not pronounced. Je veux. Tu veux. Final X not pronounced, the same form. Il veut. Final T not pronounced. Elle veut. Okay, so here, so far we've got one phonetical form, it's the. Then for nous, classic ending, O N S, don't pronounce the S, just pronounce the ON. Nous voulons. Nous voulons. Same thing here, classic ending, E Z for vous. But then you pronounce it E. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. And the last one. Here, E, U, E. And then E, N, T, classic ending. But then you don't pronounce it. So you get veulent. Veulent. Ils veulent. Elles veulent. Ils veulent. 
elles veulent. Ok, so let's repeat it one more time. Je veux, tu veux, il veut, elle veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, ils veulent, elles veulent. So that's it for this lesson. It was a leçon M. Uh, well, you can find more lessons right here. Imagier is the name of the channel on YouTube. And then more material can be found there at imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Bonjour à tous. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le verbe savoir. Savoir means to know, and it's quite useful. And uh, But then it is uh, irregular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs. So it's quite good to see the, the way to conjugate it together, okay, at the present form. And we'll see it right now. Okay, so let's start now. Je sais. Okay, final S not pronounced. And then you get this A-I-E, okay. Je sais. C'est, c'est, ok? Tu sais, same form, final S not pronounced, tu sais. Il sait, final T not pronounced, elle sait. So, one phonetical form so far. Nous savons, so classic ending for nous, O-N-S, you don't pronounce the final S, nous savons, nous Savons. Ok? Then, vous savez. Classic ending for vous, a Z, but then phonetically it's E. Vous savez. Savez. And then, il. Here, classic ending for il and l at the plural form. E, N, T. You don't pronounce it, so you get the sound sav. V, 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 v. Sav. Ok? Il sav. Elles savent. So let's see that one more time. Je sais. Tu sais. Il sait. Elle sait. Nous savons. Vous savez. Ils savent. Elles savent. Well, that's it. You know the verb savoir at the present form and I'm really happy for you if you want to check more lessons then it's uh, www.youtube.com slash imagier as French people would say okay and then the website is here imagier.net you can find more material have a great day bye bye bonjour à tous hi everyone and welcome to learn French with Vincent this is Unité 4 leçon O And in this lesson, we'll see il y a, so we saw it in a previous lesson quite shortly. So il y a means there is or there are. But then in French, we will have only one form, il y a. Okay, so let's see, for instance, here a question. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a, so, is there, un magasin, a shop, dans le quartier, in the neighborhood, ok? Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? Alright, so the answer would be, oui, il est juste ici. Yes, it is right here. Oui, il est juste ici. Ok, so in that case, we've been using this il y a. There is, okay, just because un magasin, well, it's singular, okay, so it's basically there is a shop, there is something, okay. Let's see now, here, same thing. Il y a une piscine, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville All right. So you can see that in the first example, I've been using this est que. You remember we saw that previously that you can add if you want to ask a question. Okay. Or then it's possible here just to keep the same order. There is il y a. Okay. Une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, in this town. Okay. But then don't forget to raise your voice at the end because it's a question. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville. 
il y a une piscine dans cette ville ok just a little bit to make it clear that it's a question ok so answer oui elle est à côté de la mairie à côté remember it was next or near ok and then la mairie city hall oui elle est à côté de la mairie all right so in both cases here il y a just because it was masculin singulier ok And then here, il y a une piscine, féminin singulier. All right. And we'll see now the other option that we would have to ask correctly the question. So first, look at it. Il y a... Actually, you should change the order and put it like that. And the way you will pronounce it is y a-t-il? Y a-t-il? Okay, so that's the correct form to ask a question with il y a, so the formal form, if you want. And then, des toilettes, here it's the plural form, okay, toilets, okay. So, it doesn't really change because it will stay il y a, okay, but then here, of course, the order is changing, so that's the reason why it can be a bit tricky to, to notify the, the, the fact that basically it doesn't change even if it's plural here, okay. Dans ce restaurant, in this restaurant. Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Okay, and then the answer. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, droite, remember, it was on the right. À droite, on the right. Just on the right. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, so to re resume the whole thing, remember this. Il y a will be used so for there is so like here un magasin a shop so it's the singular form okay or then here as well il y a there is une piscine a swimming pool but still it will be also used as like that il y a okay or then in the other order here for the plural form okay it doesn't change so that's one interesting thing In French, for once, it's easy. It doesn't change. Il y a plus singulier or then il y a plus pluriel. Okay? I hope it was clear. Okay? Because it's quite useful, this il y a uh, form. So then, uh, if you're not sure about that, well, you can watch the video again or then leave a comment on YouTube. And that's the name of the channel, Imagier. Okay? And then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye.